Video editing. It's a thing that I do a lot. It's practical in my career. However, I've never actually made a video on video editing. And in general, I'm just asked a lot about video editing. Kurt, how did you do that scene with the other Kurt? And all the Kurt's in that video where the Kurt's are walking by. How did you do that scene with the sneakers and the thing and the Kurt and the thing and the graphics and the editing and the swipe, swip, swipity swap, skibbity bop, shoo walk walk. It's a lot to unpack. So for the sake of this being my first tutorial on video editing, I'm just gonna keep this in the realm of my overall process of where I begin an edit in general. Now, I've shot and edited a large variety of different types of videos, whether it's like more scenic kind of client work or my YouTube videos or even stuff that I've done for BuzzFeed. They all require different kind of skill sets in telling a story, but there is one fundamental thing that applies to all of them that will make your life easier. And this is something I wish little Kurt from one year ago was doing, which would have made his life far easier. So Kurt, this is for you. And that is the exhilarating, exciting topic of organization. Now, whether you're a veteran video editor or you're just doing this for YouTube or fun, organizing your projects and your files won't only make you a faster editor, but it'll make you a much, much more desirable editor to work with if that's something you want to pursue. The first thing I do with every single project before I begin editing is create a file structure for it. So permanently here in my folder, I have my file structure. In it, I have my assets, my project files, thumbnails that I'll be using for my YouTube videos, and then the exports for the videos themselves. Under assets, there is audio. So if you're recording audio separate from your video, most commonly in stuff like interviews, this is where it'll go. Images that you'll be collecting for your videos, music, sound effects, and then of course, the video itself. I do use Adobe Premiere Pro, but this process should be the same, I think, for any video editor, regardless of the software you're using. So first thing I do is I drag the assets right into the project itself, in which you can tell for this project demonstration, I already have it there. So first, I'm gonna use a client video that I recently shot and put together as my first example. The first thing I do is I create a sequence in Adobe Premiere Pro where I just begin vomiting all my footage onto one timeline to give myself just a clearer idea of what it is I'm working with. So this is kind of the footage scrubbing process where I get to look at what I've done and just pick out the little clips that I like the most. So right here, I like this a lot. In Adobe Premiere Pro, you can hit I to set your in point for that clip and then O for your out clip. Yes, that's a good clean clip. And then what I'll do is I'll drag that right into the sequence and there we have. So this is what this video is going to look like. Now the rough footage sequence is exactly what it is. It is purely just the rough footage that I shot and me just picking out the little clips in all of my shots uh, that I think look best. Sometimes I'll throw an adjustment layer on there just to start experimenting with color grading so it gives me a different idea of what the video will look like when it's done. Now for this video that I made for a client, they purely just wanted something visual and cinematic. So my editing process was much more streamlined. And during this rough footage process, this is where you can start to trim things up in little ways. So say I want this shot a little shorter, there's two ways you can go about it. I can hit C, the C key, and cut it hit V for mouse and then click it and then, and then hit Alt backspace and that will just completely delete that clip and bring everything forward. Another way I can do this is also hitting the B key. So say I just wanted to shrink this clip down to where this marker is, I can just hold the end of the clip using B and then drag it over and then again, everything will come forward with it. This is a really nifty trick when you're working with a lot of footage and you don't wanna disrupt everything else. Now for this particular project, the client really just wanted something cinematic. There was no interviews involved, so it was a pretty streamlined process for me. So all I really had to do is find the shots that I wanted and then I worked through what I would refer to as cut downs, which is right here where I would take this six minute sequence and then put it in another sequence and this is where I would begin to do my kind of first draft. So in this sequence, I started experimenting with music. You can see that I got rid of all the adjustment layers and applied the color grading that I like to the actual clips themselves. And this is really when I start to get heavy into the process of elimination. I'll start deleting shots and getting rid of things that just intuitively don't feel necessary. If there is a shot that I really, really like that I know I want to use, sometimes I'll put it in the above layer just so it stands out to me or I'll label it with something like violet. 
so I'm aware, oh yes, that's the shot I want to use. And then from here, I go through another process of cutting them down, and from here you can tell that it's a lot shorter at two and a half minutes. I've made the letterbox official to it. This is much closer to what it is I want to do. Now, sequences are extremely useful for just organizing footage in general, so something I'll do is I'll do a sequence for, say, an interview with one single person, and then I'll start to edit the interview in that sequence. And then I'll have another sequence that's just B-roll footage. And sometimes I'll go even a step further and start categorizing that into, say, B-roll of street. It'll only be footage of the street. And B-roll of wilderness. It'll only be B-roll of the wilderness. And that's just a really quick way for me to be able to copy and paste and pull things into what would finally be the official final sequence, the video you want to make. But now I want to transition over to a recent YouTube video I've made. Okay. Now you'll see here that my organization remains the exact same as my client work. The thing that differs is how I organize my sequence. My YouTube videos are much more free-forming. In most cases, it's me rambling and talking about something, and then I just have to take that footage and make it watchable, something interesting. And since for the client project, I'm going there and I'm documenting something when opposed to a YouTube video when I'm just filming something I already have up here that I want to show. Now, if you're just starting out and you just want to learn the basics to video editing, Editing, my suggestion to you is pick up your phone or camera if you have one and just start filming things. Film anything and then take that footage, put it in a sequence, pick the shots that you like and start putting together and start mixing it around and try and actually convey something out of random footage. Early on for me, it was really useful for me to edit to music. So if you want, you can pick a song and then just start editing the clips to the rhythm and the pacing of that, of that music. And then eventually you'll find your own kind of natural pacing and what you think feels right in the story you're, story you're trying to tell. Yeah. So if you're just feeling a little uninspired about what you're doing, just take this nice, beautiful, snowy footage at a farm and slap it on a Skyrim music and let all your dreams come true. And if there's one last thing I can try and hit home for someone who is going to be editing their own footage is don't fall too deeply in love with what your footage looks like. Because even though there's a particular shot that you really like, that you really think is resonating with you, it may not serve the betterness of the story you're trying to tell. So for example, on this farm shoot, I just loved this shot right here. I don't know if it was the colors or that it just had a really, really movie-esque feeling, but in the end, it just kind of interrupted the flow of this kind of woodsy, wintry looking stuff, and then ultimately, it had to go. We had to cut it. So remember, it is whatever is going to best serve the story you're telling. It's not always entirely about how pretty the footage is. Now there is so much to cover when it comes to video editing, whether it's special effects or transitions or masking or color grading and all that, it is endless. And I assure you there are a whole lot of other tutorials on YouTube that are great. However, if you did like this, this tutorial and you think I did an okay job, let me know and maybe I'll consider doing more. Maybe I'll make it like a regular thing, like once a month I'll do like a video tutorial. In the meantime, I'm gonna try and see if I can blast through a few questions that you folks asked about editing and see if I can answer the best I can in a short period of time. So, Brandon Souls asks, with the flick of your wrist, how did you make the Nintendo Switch appear in your hand so seamlessly? Like this? And then ZW Buckley, who has a great channel, and I'll link that in the description below, ask a number of questions, but one thing was how you plan out and script your videos. I don't actually script my videos. I have, and I just don't think it feels right or natural. So in most cases, I'll have an idea of something I wanna talk about and I'll just let it rip and we'll go from there. And say if the opening is a little bit more involved, like the Bandersnatch review, for example, That wasn't necessarily scripted as I saw what I wanted and I just started filming. And in the post editing process, I 
tried my best to see if I could make what I wanted happen to happen. But again, I can save how I did that for the future. Okay, that's it. If you're new here, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming by and thank you for making it this far. I'm Kurt Navina. How you doing? Okay. That's all I got. It was such a pleasure. Hope this helps. 